he's just a hack. He's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome to the Believe in NFL Draft Prospect Podcast. It is an interview edition bringing you some insight into some of the most talented football players across the country, regardless of of level of competition and get you ready for some other players who are going to be 2023 NFL draft prospects. You may also be listening to this one on the Believe in FCS show, which is hosted by Joe DeLeon and Sean Anderson. I have, of course, one of the FCS stars in all of the level. I got Isaiah Afonso, who was the leading rusher in the FCS last year for Montana State. Really accomplished player dating back to 2018 during his uh, freshman season where he ran for over 1,000 yards. Isaiah is one of the best running backs just on the FCS level in general, and one of the best running backs in all of college football. So, Isaiah, I appreciate you again, man, taking a little bit of time. This is fantastic. Been a big fan of your game for some time now, man. So thank you so much for joining me for a few minutes. Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. No, absolutely, Isaiah. So I I wanted to kind of start you out a little bit. uh, It's a little bit of a journey, I guess, to a degree. I know you're originally a Washington guy. So can you take me through just the high school career briefly, recruiting, and and then ultimately how you ended up with Montana State to begin? Well, I went to Bellevue High School, and during the time, there was a and the guys I looked up to. So going to that program, I saw a lot of what it took to play at the D1 level. And towards my senior year, I had a good season. I was Gatorade Player of the Year for the state of Washington, but I didn't really get recruited as heavy. And Montana State came in, I think, a month before, and I got on a visit there, loved it fit everything I wanted, and then started playing. I love it, man. Let me ask you about that, Isaiah, because, I mean, it's a little bit of a – I don't want to say strange, but, like, I mean, being the Gatorade Player of the Year in Washington, is there there a reason that you can kind of pinpoint to maybe not being recruited quite as high? Because obviously you ended up at Montana State, which is a fantastic team. I mean, we just saw Troy Anderson go in, what, the second round coming out of the college, right? So it's it's a great school just in general. But was there a reason that you felt like maybe you were recruited a little less than, than maybe you would anticipate for a player that was as, as credentialed as you were? I mean, honestly, I can't pinpoint one thing. I mean, everything happens for a reason. I'm glad that I came to Montana State and I've had the career that I've had here. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, and I, I mean, like I said, man, it pretty much as immediately as you, as soon as you get to Montana State, you become a thousand yard rusher, and I know that you've, you know, just been consistently just a really good and productive football player throughout. Can you just take me through maybe a couple of your favorite moments with Montana State so far? I know you guys had the nice playoff run, um, you know, in the playoffs this past year, and I know you've obviously accomplished a lot from a production perspective. But what are a couple maybe just of your favorite accomplishments so far during the career? So. My freshman year, I'd probably say my biggest accomplishment was running against or running for over 200 yards in a game against Cal Poly. And then also, I think it was breaking a record for the single seat or single game rushing record for a playoff game. And then my sophomore year, I was fortunate enough to come back towards the end of the season and I rebroke the record in a game against Austin P. and then making making all the way to the quarters. And then we didn't play in 2020 because of COVID. So Mm -hmm. 2021 coming out and then just playing in the national championship game in Frisco. That's probably the best experience I've had. And and I wanted to ask specifically about, you know, you mentioned the 2020 season that was lost, of course, the the COVID-19 pandemic for a lot of colleges across the, you know, multiple, multiple levels on the college um, in the collegiate game. Talk to me a little bit about how hard that was for you, maybe a little bit of Isaiah. I know it's it was tough. I've talked to a lot of guys both on, you know, FBS programs that got their season cut short, FCS that got their season cut completely, Division II that got your season cut completely. Talk to me a little bit about just navigating what was a difficult time, I'm sure, for you guys. It was just tough. It was like we were working out and, like, hoping for games and whatnot, but then our county shut down all of that. So just sitting out a year and getting – or seeing everyone else get a chance to play – it's tough, but I think it kept us motivated for having the success that we had this past season. Before we continue on with this discussion, folks, I do want to tell you about Bet Online. Today's sponsors, our partners at Bet Online, continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, including updated odds on the NBA playoffs, fights, and even next season's futures. Don't forget that the MLB is back. Who are you picking to win the World Series? 
BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so head to their website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. And, and I want to ask about Montana State a little bit, just maybe a little a little bit more of the just surroundings and, and the campus in general. I've, I actually have not been to Montana State before, but I have been through Montana a little bit. I've been out, you know, in um, kind of the Yellowstone uh, area out there as well, out west. So I've seen kind of like what some of the better parts of maybe the sites and everything. And I know you mentioned that you just, you know, got on a hike this morning. So can you take me through just how beautiful it is out there, man? Cause I feel like a lot of people haven't been out there, but I mean, I love it out West. I think it's just such a beautiful place to live. It's definitely one of the most beautiful places that I've had a chance to live in. Like you look around, you do a 360 and you're seeing nothing but mountains and you're probably 15 minutes to the closest hike. If you're big into skiing or snowboarding, you're 30 minutes away from the closest mountain. There's just a lot to do in the town of Bozeman. Yeah, Yeah, no, Bozeman's really beautiful. I think I actually flew into Bozeman, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, it's um, really beautiful out there. I would tell everybody, if you haven't been out there, go check out the mountains, like Isaiah's kind of saying. If you want to go out to Yellowstone, it's it's absolutely beautiful out there. Some great hiking spots, obviously. So, um, Isaiah, I wanted to take you through a little bit last season. You know, you, you obviously, you know, over 1,600 yards rushing. I think you're the FCS leading rusher. A, a dynamic season. You have the playoff run. I know it didn't end the way you obviously wanted, but I know there was a couple injuries, obviously, in, in the title game. So can you just take me through maybe a little bit of the – I guess because I know you were going into the playoffs. Montana State's usually a really good team. You're going into the playoffs. Your starting quarterback ends up not playing in the playoffs, and then we, you got Tommy that comes in at quarterback. He does a great job. A lot of pretty crazy season. But how, how much just kind of reliving it was it just I, I don't want to call it, I don't know if bittersweet's the right word because it didn't come out exactly the way you wanted, but it had to be just an exciting season to experience. It was definitely exciting. We reached all the goals that we set for the summer and that we had for the previous year that we didn't play in. We just kind of it just ended up short, you yeah. know, so it, it was what it was, but it was definitely fun. And now that we've gotten there, we know what it takes to get back there. And, and let me ask you something from your play um, play style for a second, because what I love about your game is there is like a no nonsense feel to you. You know, you have or you're a one cut and I'm going to hit it. And I'm going to hit it as far, fast as possible. And I love that style. Can you talk to me maybe a little bit about who are some players? It could be growing up. It could be in the past. It could be present, some NFL guys, whatever it is. Who are some guys that maybe you model your game after a little bit that you think like, you know, this is kind of how I win as a player as well? So when I was in high school, a player that I looked up to was one of the alumni from Bellevue, Miles Jack, and just how he played and how aggressive and tenacious he was. But as I got to college, I started breaking down like the running back position. And I wanted to find a running back that I could model my game after. And the one that was always like someone who I knew I liked his style was Frank Gore. Just from durability, toughness, and then just consistency from throughout the years that he was in the NFL. Man, I, I I love Frank Gore so much, man, because in a position that is has a really short shelf life, Frank Gore was like, nope, I'm going to play forever. <laughs> like, it didn't make any sense, man. But that, that's a great role model. And that makes kind of sense, man. You kind of have that low center of gravity, always finishing forward, physical style. So that makes a ton of sense. And I, I know that, you know, we talked a little bit. Uh, I mentioned him briefly. Obviously, you got to play with a lot of great football players. I mean, you had Daniel Hardy that was drafted. I mentioned Troy Anderson, who went in the second round great football player the Atlanta Falcons. Can you talk to me about that defense you guys see every day? Because I think it's a little cliche sometimes where guys go like, the best team I play against every week is the one I see every day in practice. But, I mean, literally, you're seeing guys like Troy and Daniel, and it has to be a great challenge to be able to match up against those types of players every day. Yeah, just every day in fall camp, it was a battle between offense and defense and those guys. And then when we did inside run with Troy in the box and Daniel on the line, it's always hard to like find a hole. So I appreciate having them for the years that I did. And they've definitely made me a way better football player. And I, I got a little bit of a two-parter for the next one for you. I mean, one, it could be, you know, obviously you've been playing for a long time now at Montana State dating down to 2018. So kind of looking back to 2018, the one you first got here, how what is an area of your game you feel like has improved the most during your time? And then now this offseason, the second part is, what is one area that you really want to hone in on this offseason to take your game to an even higher level? 
So when I first came into Montana State, something that I struggled with was just like slowing the game down and like taking what the defense gives me. That was a big part of the game that I struggled with in the beginning, like where I had good games and then the next week I'd be playing way too fast and just out of control. And now for this off season, something that I've been working on for years is just like my ability to catch the ball at the backfield to show that I can do whatever's asked for me or asked of me. And how, how has this off season been? I know obviously it, it seems like everything's back to normal. I know we just had the full fall this past year, but you go right from spring to fall, but now you had a little bit of break, got the spring practice in, and now it seems to be on a, in a regular trajectory. How's just the off season been for you guys in general? It's been great. So like right now we're in a break. We start back up in the, in June 1st, but I've been here in Bozeman just going to the workout room and really focusing on nutrition and then just, get my body right. I love it. I love it. And obviously I expect your offense to be really explosive this year. I mentioned Tommy coming in at a quarterback who I know is a dynamic player. I know you guys lost McCutcheon, who was a really good player at wide receiver, but I'm sure there's the next guy in type of conversation for him. So how explosive, because I asked about that defense earlier, how explosive do you think this 22 version of Montana State can be? I, I have to think that you guys have big expectations offensively. I think that it's going to be a very, very explosive group with Tommy leading us like, you guys got to see what four games of what he could do in the playoffs. So just only imagine like a full season. I feel like he's going to have a great year and the offense is going to be amazing. It was our first year in that offense with Coach House, right? And the new offensive coordinator. So the next year is usually always better. So I'm excited for that. And now, now that you guys have, you know, you've been a successful program, you got to the championship this, this past fall, you've done a lot of great things. What are some goals that you have? It could both be from a team perspective, you know, whatever those might be, and then individually for you. Obviously, being a guy that's had so many accolades and so much production, it's not much more that you can do as far as, you know, just the continued production. But what are some individual and team goals that you have set for this final year for you? So a goal that I have every year is to be All-American, like throughout the whole entire nation for the level of FCS. Um, a team goal that I hold dearly that I – always want is just to keep on winning winning and then the rest will take care of itself i love that man and and last question i have for you isaiah it's another two-parter one i I, obviously i think that you are going to have a chance to play professional football you know at the next level when when that day does come so i know we're fast forwarding a little bit but just when that does happen for you man when you get that opportunity you go through the draft process all that good stuff one how long has that been a dream for you to maybe potentially be a professional football player? And how much of a blessing will it be to know that just in a year from now, you, you could be living out that dream? I feel like it's going to be a big blessing. And this has been a goal of mine since third grade. I still remember when I was on Madden 08 and they had like these little cards that you could watch, like the snippets, of all the Hall of Famers. And ever since that day, I've always just it's always been a lifelong dream to play in the NFL. I love that. Again, joined by Isaiah Afonso, running back out of Montana State. Top running back returning in FCS football this year. Make sure to keep an eye out for him. Isaiah, again, man, fantastic interview. Really appreciated all the context, all the insight that you were able to bring, man. Thank you so much for joining the show today.